Now I would like to introduce our second awardee. The Alemany Award in honor of Archbishop Alemany, the first Archbishop of San Francisco, actually the first Bishop of California, and then when it divided into two, the first Archbishop of San Francisco was a Dominican. And yes, yay, yay, yay. Otherwise, we'd have to find another bishop to honor. <laughs> Archbishop Alamany, as first bishop, worked very hard to build up this archdiocese, which at that time was not just San Francisco, but the entire Bay Area and beyond, all north. It was huge and east. He brought in many religious orders, religious orders of men, congregations of sisters, to start schools and hospitals, high schools. And because of his service to this archdiocese, we honor men and women who have also given much service to the people of San Francisco, of the Bay Area, the people of the Church of the Archdiocese of San Francisco. Monsignor Francis Weber is not able to be with us tonight. He is a priest of the Diocese of Los Angeles, the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. He is 85 years old and he cannot travel this distance any longer. There's a little family restaurant about two miles from where he lives and we went there to eat with him and he drove, he can get that far, <laughs> and he can get to his doctor's for a doctor appointment, but he cannot come up to San Francisco. But Monsignor Weber was born in Indiana and at age 12, his family moved to Hollywood, and his father became a plumber. He was interested in the priesthood since high school and entered the junior seminary at that time, and then entered St. John's Seminary in Camarillo. There was a little time in between there that I'm gonna mention in a little bit. He was ordained in 1959 by Cardinal James McIntyre. He was immediately assigned as pastor or associate pastor and he called the pastor up and he said, I'm your new associate. And the pastor said, good for you. And he hung up. <laughs> so Monsignor Weber called back and said, I'm your new associate. What do you want me to do? And the pastor said, well, at 3.30 this afternoon, we're having confessions, so why don't you come over and hear confessions? So that was his introduction to pastoral ministry. But then he went into different types of ministry. He began to organize the Archdiocesan Archi Archive Center and worked very hard on building the archives until they moved it actually in 1981 to a brand new building that was built for that purpose at the San Fernando Mission Center in the Archdiocese. And that's where it is today and he has his office there. So over the years he served as pastor, as editor of the Archdiocesan newspaper, The Tidings, as a high school teacher and as archivist for the Archdiocese and he's an author of many books. In this past November, I had the pleasure of visiting with Monsignor Weber and talking about his work and experience in actually in the 1970s, working to bring the remains of Archbishop Alemany back to San Francisco 
When Alemany retired in 1886, he moved to his home in Spain, and he died four years later. And it was the thought of the administration of the archdiocese that it would be really appropriate to have his remains here with all the other bishops of San Francisco over the years. And so Monsignor Weber was asked to begin that work. It took five years of negotiating with the Spanish government, with the Spanish Catholic hierarchy, and with Alamini's family. But he finally got it all worked out and brought Alamini's remains back to San Francisco. So why was Monsignor Weber chosen for this? Well, before he entered St. John's Seminary, he became an undertaker. <laughs> or in today's parlance, um, a mortician at a funeral home. So he knew how to do it. And the very first words that you're going to hear in a video clip that we're going to show when we interviewed Monsignor Weber is how he moved the remains of eight bishops from their resting places around the diocese into Holy Cross Cemetery in Coma. And so you might hear that and wonder, what? Now when you think the video is over, wait. There's an epilogue. And he's going to describe the one bishop of San Francisco he did not move, and he's going to tell why. So now listen to Monsignor Weber's story in his own words. over the years uh, moved and uh, uh, relocated at least uh, eight bishops. Uh, the, the one we're talking about this evening is uh, Archbishop Alamani. After he retired, he decided to go home to his uh, motherland, Spain. The Alamani family had been prominent in Barcelona, still is by the way. And so when I was doing my dissertation work in Barcelona on the Catalonian bishops that were very influential in, in California ecclesiastical history, I set out to locate his remains. So I got my first contact with the descendants of the Alemany family. They, they were sort of uh, vaguely interested in having him move back to California. Basically, what uh, we discovered was that uh, Alemany had been in uh, tombed at the time of his death in a little town called Beek, which is north of Barcelona some miles, in, the, in a chapel there uh, where he had retired. There's a marker in this little chapel on the wall which says that, the, that Alan Manny was a retired Archbishop of San Francisco. And uh, so we presume that the remains were located behind the marker on the wall. There was a little priest uh, wandering around the place who looked quite old. So we were talking about taking the plaque down from the wall and uh, he said, I wouldn't do that. He said, he's not buried there. He's buried in the floor in front of the plaque. I said to him, well, how do you know that? He said, I was there. He was a little kid and he had been at the funeral. We did follow his advice and we um, ripped up the floor and there was the casket. We were going to bring the body back to California um, via Frankfurt. When we got to Frankfurt, they came to me and they said, we've got a problem. We cannot send the casket by itself and the casket will not fit into the plane that we're taking from Frankfurt to Los Angeles. And it's true, the casket would not fit into the, the hold. I said, you know, the law says that when you're sending a remains, a casket in an airplane, there has to be a shipping freight there. 
but it doesn't say the casket has to be in it. So what we did is we took the casket out of the shipping crate and broke the shipping crate into several pieces and we sent the pieces along, but the casket wasn't in it. But we still were able to arrive in San Francisco on the morning of the funeral. Also mentioned as an aside that uh, Cardinal Manning, when uh, he uh, was reflecting one day on my uh, activity along these lines, said uh, he wanted to be buried at Calvary Cemetery out in the uh, area where all the pioneer priests have been buried. And he looked at me in the eye and he said, and I don't want you ever to touch my remains. Uh, and uh, he said, in case you violate that wish, I will send a bolt of lightning from wherever I'm at at the time, and uh, that will forestall any future ideas. Well, that is the only reason why Cardinal Manning has not been moved into our new cathedral, because he made it very clear he liked to be where uh, he had planned to be, and, and there he is today. Some of the pictures that you saw in the video are hanging on the wall over there. And so at the end of our evening, I invite you to go over and take a, a closer look at the process of digging up the casket of Alamany and then the ceremonies of receiving him here in San Francisco. And just over here, we have one of our banners standing up on the floor. And it was very interesting to see the quote of Archbishop Alamany. This is what he said upon his departure when he retired in San Francisco to go to Spain. He said, my children, my body alone departs, but my heart is with you and will remain with you. Little did he know his body also would remain with us. I would like to invite a, a priest from Los Angeles, Father John Paul Gonzalez, to receive the award on the behalf of uh, Monsignor Weber. Thank you very much. I'm very humbled to receive this award on behalf of such a great churchman and historian, Monsignor Francis Weber. I first met Monsignor Weber when I was just 13 years old, a freshman in high school seminary, and the only place we could travel to outside the seminary was the San Fernando Mission one of the 21 missions established by St. Junipero Serra and his companions. And there is the office of the archives, the archive center where Monsignor Weber resides. And I used to love visiting Monsignor Weber's office because I would sit across his large wooden desk and he would entertain me with stories, stories of the Church of Los Angeles and California and the whole United States. Monsignor's 
uh, ministry as a historian and archivist, I believe, flows from a great love for Christ and his church. And he so carefully uh, has studied and archived the Church of Los Angeles and California and indeed the greater United States. We heard the story of Monsignor Weber uh, moving the eight bodies of bishops. And you know that getting one bishop to move can be a very daunting task. No offense, Your Excellency. <laughs> but trying to get eight bishops to move is an enormous task. It probably helps when they're dead. <laughs> but indeed, Monsignor Weber was the right man to select to get the job done because he would have known the lives of each of those bishops so well by his studies. He would have known their location and he would have known all that was necessary uh, to group them together to their final resting place. We have been blessed by the life and priestly ministry of Monsignor Weber, and we are so grateful that he has been uh, given this award uh, by the Dominicans. Thank you for acknowledging his great contribution to the church, uh, not only in California, but the church in the United States and beyond and we continue to ask God's abundant blessings upon him. Thank you.